Howdy again everyone, and let's get straight into checking out this nice, simple little lens, Nikon's AFS DX Nikkor 35mm f1.8 G. It's an APS-C lens for Nikon's APS-C digital SLR cameras, although it can also be adapted onto various mirrorless cameras too. It can be found new for under US$200, or only £140 here in the UK. It can be found very easily on eBay, if you're so inclined, for only about £100, so potentially it could be an absolute steal for you. As I've mentioned, it's designed for APS-C cameras. I adapted it onto my Nikon Z7 camera to see what shooting it in full frame mode would be like, but the camera greys out that option, forcing you to shoot only in the cropped DX mode. So, taking that crop into consideration, it's the full frame equivalent of a 52.5mm lens with a depth of field of about f2.7 or so. So, that's nice, it's neither wide angle nor telephoto, and offers some opportunity for getting out of figures backgrounds in your pictures. The maximum aperture of f1.8 is also very bright, meaning you can keep shooting with decent shutter speeds in darker situations, so a lot of users might be getting this lens to get family snapshots and pictures indoors. The lens itself is small and lightweight, tipping the scales at 200 grams, and its build quality is not bad at all when you consider its price. It's based on a metal lens mount with a generous weather sealing gasket. There's a switch to turn between auto and manual focus, not something to be taken for granted these days. The focus ring doesn't turn very smoothly at all, and there's no focus scale on it, but it is rubberized and you can safely turn it at any time, and the front element doesn't turn or extend as you do so, so those are all nice little features on a low budget lens. The autofocus motor works averagely quickly, making a quiet whooshing and clicking noise as it does so. In normal use, that's not bothersome, but if you're shooting video, then your camera's microphone will pick up that sound. When shooting through my camera's viewfinder, the autofocus motor missed my subject a little occasionally, but when shooting in live view mode, the accuracy was perfect. This lens exhibits only a tiny bit of focus breathing, zooming in slightly when focusing more closely. It doesn't feature image stabilization, but it does at least come with a dinky little lens hood, a sweet little bonus on such a low budget lens. Its filter size is a small 52mm in diameter. Overall, as I've alluded to a few times already, its build quality is actually very pleasing for an option at this price point. But what about image quality? I'm testing it on a Nikon D5600 with its 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. Let's start at f1.8. The middle of the image is looking nice and sharp here, with a noticeable lack of purple fringing. And the more difficult image corners? Not bad really, there's a fair bit of detail being retained there, although contrast has gone a bit ghostly. Stop down the aperture to any f2.8, and the picture quality there looks great, with some extra contrast completing that sharpness. And the middle of the image now looks stupendous. Remember, a 24 megapixel sensor is no walk in the park for most camera lenses. Stop down to f4, and the middle looks about the same, and, well, so do the corners. In fact, the lens stays about this sharp down to f11. At f16, the image starts to get softer though, from the physical effect of diffraction. Overall though, for a lens at this price point, the performance is pretty impressive, it's nice and sharp. Let's take a look at distortion and vignetting now. If you turn your in-camera corrections off, or shoot in RAW mode, we see the lens projecting some moderate barrel distortion here. As for vignetting, the corners of the image look just a little bit dark at f1.8, but they do brighten up a bit at f2.8, so nothing to really worry about here. This lens can get you as close as 30cm to your subject, bringing smaller things into close view, so let's have a look at close-up image quality. It gets very ghostly at f1.8. Stop down to f2.8 and your contrast returns, and f4 looks a little sharper too. So, if you're shooting close up, stop down the aperture a little. Let's see what happens now when bright lights tray into the picture. Contrast remains good enough. We do see some moderate flaring there though, but I've certainly seen much worse performances than this before. 
As I've mentioned already, this lens can get you some relatively out of focus backgrounds, much more so than a zoomable kit lens, and particularly if you're close to your subject. The quality of those out of focus backgrounds, or the lens's bokeh, is generally quite nice and soft. Particularly busy backgrounds though, like foliage, look a little jumbled up. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration, which are colourful highlights in the bokeh before and after the plane of focus. This is quite a bright aperture lens, so I thought I'd test it for you. Here, at f1.8, you can see quite a bit of green and purple slipping into our image. Stop down to f2.8 to see a small reduction, and at f4, the colours are mostly back to normal now. Overall, well, you can't really ask much of a lens that costs under £150 brand new, but Nikon managed to do a great job here. The lens is built nicely enough, it offers sharp images with softly out of focus backgrounds, and there are no very serious optical problems with it. It's also a useful focal length and maximum aperture. Considering that very low price, it simply has to come highly recommended.